To get us started, please allow me to introduce Ali Houston, class of 2007, a member of Georgian's Alumni Association Executive Council, who will serve as our moderator today and also share her experiences as a mentor and also as a mentee. Ali is a seasoned professional with diverse experience in banking, technology, and property management. Navigating her career journey, she offers a wealth of knowledge, uniquely positioning her to guide enterprises in leveraging technology while understanding the intricacies of human interaction in the modern world. As the people and culture manager at Melchior Management, Ali is devoted champion of growth and well-being committed to empowering individuals to discover their flow for sustainable success. Known for her strategic thinking and compassionate leadership, Ali creates positive and inclusive work environments where individuals thrive and businesses flourish. Beyond her professional pursuits, Ali enjoys exploring nature with her puppy. With a passion for coaching, she plays a pivotal role in supporting individuals to achieve a harmonious, harmonious work-life balance. Ali, it is a true pleasure to have you join us, and we appreciate you serving as our moderator. Over to you. Thank you, Kelly, and I am so excited to be part of this speaker series. It has given me great opportunity to reflect on my own personal journey as a mentor and a mentee. I recently had the pleasure to sit down with both Maria and Pavla and plan, um, plan the flow of this event, and I'm so looking forward to this conversation. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our panelists and who we'll be talking to for this afternoon. I'd like to introduce Maria. She is a fellow alumni executive council member, class of 2001. Maria currently serves as a vice president of commercial service, commercial financial services at the greater Hamilton market with RBC. Maria has worked with RBC for 26 years and has held a variety of senior leadership roles, including retail and commercial banking, business enablement, insurance, national office, regional office, and financial planning. Maria started her career with RBC in the branch as a co-op student and joined RBC full-time upon completion of her degree. Maria also holds an MBA from Dalhousie University Maria lives in Southwestern Ontario, where her and her husband enjoy volunteering in the community, providing counsel on boards through her alumni associations and other organizations focused on her passions of giving back and spending time with her family. Welcome, Maria. Good morning, Allie, and thank you very much for the introduction. And thank you, Georgian, for this incredible opportunity to speak on such an important topic uh, that continues to be relevant regardless, regardless of age stage, tenure experience, uh, certainly it is so important to whatever personal and professional journey anyone is on. And so really happy to be here this morning and this afternoon. Thanks. Thank you. And we're delighted to welcome Georgian Zone, Dean of Business Management, automotive, automotive Business, where she focuses her efforts on improving the lives of those studying and working at the college. Pavlik came to Georgian in 2018 where she began her role as Associate Dean, Business and Management. Before joining Georgian College, she served as a faculty member at Durham College. Paula Pavla came to the college system with more than 15 years of management and leadership experience in the food and service industry. Pavla's previous roles in the industry included leading and working in partnerships with various local and global teams. She has worked with and consulted for small, medium, and large enterprise companies such as McCain Foods, Belmont Meats, and the Government of Ontario. Pavla holds her Master's of Business Administration, specialized in hospitality and tourism from the University of Guelph. Pavla also holds an undergraduate and honors business degree from Wilfrid Laurier University. Outside of Outside of Georgian College, Pavla's passions for lifelong learning, community contribution is very important to her. And Pavla supports a range of organizations, including Youth Haven, Achilles Canada, and Shining Through, Shining Through Center for Autism. Welcome, Pavla. Thank you so much, Ali. And I am absolutely honored to be on this panel with 
such experienced and talented women such as uh, yourself and Maria. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to speaking with everyone today. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you both. And it's been such a pleasure. Let's get started with our first, our first question. I want to ask each of you about your thoughts about what is a mentor and why mentorship matters to you. Maria, can you get us started? Absolutely. I'd love to. Um, maybe a couple thoughts on what a mentor is to me. Uh, certainly a person who supports, advises, and guides comes to mind. I certainly didn't have a mentor for a number of years. And there's a couple of individuals who later on in my career, I realized were actually informally my mentors. And I thought about the quality and the caliber of the guidance and conversation that we were having. They were pure, they were honest, they were candid, they were fully transparent. And they allowed me to fall and skin my knees and experience things when uh, perhaps I didn't want to take a plunge and maybe I was a little frightened or scared to get a little uncomfortable. And they took a lot of great interest in my development unofficially. And so as I think about, you know, I didn't go seek them out. I didn't say, you know, will you be my mentor? But our relationship blossomed. And years later, I realized that these two individuals certainly invested in me. And uh, I certainly recognized the connection points we had. And I learned, uh, they told me, I learned from them as much as they learned from me. And that was really, uh, really important. Um, and that's uh, really what mentorship uh, really means to me. I love that. And Pavla, what are your thoughts? Well, you know, I'm I'm thrilled that this panel has um, has allowed me to really think about that. Um, to me, uh, you know, mentorship is an intentional effort, generally, to support and encourage someone in a particular space that uh, may have less experience or less expertise than you do in that space. Um, I feel mentorship is, is a form of leadership and, and really about creating conditions under which others can thrive and achieve their goals. Um, as a dean, mentorship really matters to me because I wanna empower our students to move towards their goals. And even more so and more exciting to me is to help them move past what they think their goals are. Um, I, I feel that mentorship could be uh, mutually empowering. I, I really do learn a lot from our students. And in fact, a rule of thumb that, uh, that I've had for a number of years is that I believe having mentors with double my experience as well as having mentors with half of my experience is, uh, is equally important and beneficial to career and, and to personal growth. I love that double the experience both ways. And mentorship started for me at Georgian College, where I had my dean help support me. So definitely there's a lot of value and they are unexpected. And sometimes you do seek them out. Thank you, ladies. Uh, so I want to think, take you back to uh, maybe a standout moment that you've had in your mentorship journey, either a mentor or as a mentee. Is there a barrier that you overcame be because of mentorship? So, um, Pavla, let's speak to you on this one first. Sure, thank you, Ali. Um, yes, there's there's definitely a standout moment, so I'll, I'll start with that. I was, and it wasn't that long ago, actually. Um, I was going through a very difficult time at work, and a very experienced, well-respected academic leader actually injected herself into my workspace. <laughs> um, you know, and, and she said to me, she said, you do great work, Pavla. People trust you. You don't deserve what has just happened, but I'm going to help you. And I'm going to help you through this. Um, I help strong female leaders and I'm going to help you. I believe that you're a strong female leader. And I'm already getting a little bit emotional thinking about this because it's, it's pretty incredible when someone who at the time I didn't have a personal relationship with really uh, believed and saw something in me that I didn't see. And I think that's, that's a really key, lovely component of, uh, of mentorship. Um, 
I, and, and I do have a, a, a relationship uh, with this uh, individual that I'm talking about uh, outside of work now as well. And she continues to be my mentor, even though she has retired. Um, and so I guess the, um, you know, the other piece was, uh, was talking about a barrier that, uh, that I overcame and I, and I feel it now because this, uh, this happened not too long ago, but it, something I struggled with when, um, from a young age was confidence. And I mean, I have internal drive and motivation and that always propelled me to just keep going in, in both professional and, uh, and, and uh, personal life. But I doubted myself often when I was younger and, and often compared myself to others and thought they were more talented than I was. And, you know, as many of us do suffer from imposter syn syndrome, um, mentorship really helped build my self-confidence uh, by by providing um, a positive and realistic perspective of, of strengths that um, that I have and, and potential. And it's really interesting that you know you can you can move through a barrier and then at some points in your career you can you can have to tackle that same barrier again and it's okay because once you tackle it, um, you're even further ahead than you were before. So it, it was it was pretty powerful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And Maria, what are some standout moments in your mentorship experience? Yeah, thanks, Sally. Um, something that really comes to mind for me as much as there's been a number of mentorship moments, and I'll speak about a mentor um, who I actually met over 15 years ago. And it's um, he's a male counterpart and colleague and has actually been my leader um, a couple of times throughout my, my tenure. Um, but he is someone who, in a particular scenario, when we first started to work together, he challenged my diversity of thought and perspective. And I was really not happy about it. I thought, how could you tell me that this isn't sort of the right way of doing things? But what he did was he really, he did it in a way that stretched my thinking. And he, you know, I fast forward today, I know he was empowering me to think critically and he allowed me to be aware of my blinders. He also, um, he also made sure I was self-reflecting and being fully aware of things that I might not have considered for a decision that I was making. And so he challenged me in the moment in a safe to speak up environment. So it wasn't judgmental, wasn't biased. Um, and he did share, you know, Marie, you need to be aware of other people's thoughts around here. And here's some advice or here's some insight I'm going to give you that you may not be privy to, but you're going to, uh, it's going to inform you directionally. And so as I think about this particular individual, I actually work with him today. And he has been, um, he's been a rock and a mentor all of these years. And the relationship honestly evolved from, you know, a leader to a player and an employee to very much a friendship uh, place that we're in. And I know he's always had my back and he's always, uh, he's always been there to break a fall, although he's allowed me to fall, which I think is really important as a mentor too. And that was certainly in the moment. Um, and he certainly provided me to, the space to grow. And so that's been pretty, um, that's been pretty special. And as I think about barriers in trying to find mentorship, um, or a mentor, the one thing there's a few things that I think about is it's really important uh, that we consider sort of styles. And so I think about, you know, a working style, a communication style, personality, you know, all of that matters. But one of the barriers that I had and I struggled with is trust. And so I always wanted to make sure that I can trust the person that I'm speaking to. I speak in the code of, you know, silence and it's going to be, it's going to stay where we are. And so it took actually, um, it took a, a sort of a moment of truth to happen uh, for me about 10 years ago. And once I allowed my barriers of trust to strengthen and come down, and so I really broke and chipped away at these I, and became quite vulnerable and had a lot more humility and I wasn't so stoic uh, in my approach of things. It was incredible to see how 
relationships with mentors changed. And so just being able to laugh at myself and not being so serious and, you know, allowing me to trust actually allowed me to bring out my best version of myself and allowed me to be myself when I was speaking to mentors. And that honestly has helped me in spades. Um, and, you know, some actually say, you know, Maria, to know you is to love you. And that's sort of the, the line that people use. But it's, you know, now I can be open, honest. I trust the system. I trust people have um, my back. And, um, and I would just say that I'm in a much better spot to break glass ceilings now because of trust. I love that. And what I heard from, I, I heard from both of you ladies was that having a mentor throughout the journey of your career, there's multiple people in different places that allowed you to come from a, a greater space of authenticity, of, of being okay with vulnerability and building trust. And when other people see you bigger than you are, you've been able to propel yourself in different areas and career and make those courageous moments, which I think is incredible. Thank you. So our next question, during our planning conversation this month, we all shared different experiences and thoughts about how we went about finding our mentors and described what we looked for in a mentor. I found our dialogue really interesting. It got me thinking, and we all agreed that mentorship can take many forms, sometimes very official, formal, and other ways might not even be labeled as a mentorship relationship, but certainly, I know both are very powerful. So Maria, can you tell us a little bit about your journey and finding mentors throughout your career and what have you looked for in your mentors? Yeah, that's awesome. That's a great question, Ali. And you know, I, I sort of shared a little bit before is I didn't put an ad in the paper and that is, you know, one thing and it, it's been quite an organic process. And, you know, I'd say the places that they've really taken place or they've taken shape have really been through volunteerism for me and just work in the community. And so I think it's really important you have internal networks and external networks. And I seem to find, you know, individuals who, you know, I know what my strengths are and I know what my gaps and my opportunities are. And I know what I admire and I aspire from other individuals. And those are the characteristics that I look for in people because I'm trying to really close my gaps of opportunity. The other thing I would say in terms of finding mentors, it's been really neat is good people know good people. And so by allowing yourself to really spread your tentacles into various networks, it's really great, you know, for individuals to connect you with people that are in their networks who you may never have actually had the opportunity to connect with. And the reality is, is, you know, some mentorship relationships will continue on for a number of months and years and you know that sort of thing and some may have a time frame and that's okay but i think what's really important is that you nourish those relationships because it is a give and take uh and and you, you know to you know to be honest i'd say a lot of individuals who have come in out of my life i do try to maintain sort of that minimal annual you know how are you doing it's been a long time i hope you're still well you know, would love to grab a coffee, um, even virtually. And so finding mentors have actually, you know, I sort of shared at the front end, um, I didn't actually realize who a couple of my mentors were till years later. And so sometimes people are on your path and they're, they're there, it's awesome. And uh, they play, you know, a pretty exceptional role. Um, but I do look for people who have very different uh, experiences and characteristics uh, and traits than I do, because that's uh, that's my development opportunity. I love that seeing seeing different perspectives for sure. And Pavla, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I was thinking about you know you you asked about journey and finding mentors, and uh, and, and it really got me thinking that you know early on in my career, I I didn't have a formal mentor. So anyone out there listening that's worried that they don't have one, it's okay. <laughs> um, you know, at that time, I, I, I really, I really didn't know much about mentorship um, or, or had given it too much thought because at the time it was never really introduced to me or discussed at school or work. So, um, so I think it's, it's just lovely that we're talking about it now and, and very helpful. Um, what I did have, and, and Maria mentioned this as well, is, is a number of people 
who helped me along the way and, and, and really inspired me. And that's absolutely a form of mentorship. And I didn't really think about that until reflecting back. So I had uh, a fantastic manager in my first job after graduating university. He taught me not only all about the, the food service business, but you know, building rapport relationships uh, within that industry. Um, you know, as I mentioned, uh, you know, drive was not an issue for me, but confidence was. And so he he validated my work. He validated what I was doing. Uh, he really encouraged me. And, um, and, and I would say for probably about 10 to 15 years of my career, my most of my colleagues were generally older and more experienced than than I was. And they they shared their skills, um, their experiences, they provided advice, and, and so certainly were wonderful mentors to me. And, and uh, I still keep in touch with, uh, with quite a few of them from time to time. So as Maria was saying, uh, you know, a check-in, I, I, do, I do make sure, and it's, and it's harder and harder to do, but I, I try to make sure that we do have that check-in. Um, mentorship for me really, took a more formal structure when, when I entered into post-secondary education, uh, specifically as a faculty member. Uh, I, and then uh, as an administrator, I had a couple of key mentors that really helped me to navigate the structure and the culture that, that is very different from, from the private sector that I came from. And, uh, and so uh, those, uh, those mentorship relationships continue on as well and, and certainly do take a more formal structure. Now, I, I also didn't seek them out necessarily. Um, you know, they seem to come into my life. Um, but what, I, what we connected on was, uh, was that really these people have been in my shoes before, right? And so... They, they understood uh, where I was, where I wanted to go. They, they really listened. And, and, I, and I do agree with Maria that that trust factor is key. I mean, certainly uh, I, I will connect with uh, someone where there's mutual trust and, and passion, uh, passion for helping others. Uh, and what's really important is, is to have a mentor that has the ability to give constructive feedback but with a solutions-oriented approach, and uh, and I think uh, that's that's basically what what I look for. And I've been very fortunate now to be able to have uh, found found mentors that um, that really help propel and uh, encourage me. And then on the other side, when it when it comes to students, uh, I mean, the time frame piece that was already mentioned is is really key because we have we have so many students that uh, that enter in and then graduate and uh, and become leaders and mentors and uh, and sometimes mentorship moments with with students are are minutes or they could be up to two years and and uh, they you know and then and then students move on and and become greater people and and that's exciting so so I do agree that uh, that mentorship can take a, a very short or can be very short in time uh, or could could extend throughout a career. And Ali, if it's okay, I'd love to add or sort of dovetail off of what Pavla said. Um, Pavla, you, you sort of allowed me to, to think a little bit more on this. And the other thing that I think about, you know, sort of on the question of what do you look for is you need to know sort of the why that you want this individual to be on your path or on your journey. And the person would be better equipped if they know the why and the role that they play. And so being really, you know, transparent and candid and open and honest with, you know, here's, you know, here's what I would really appreciate or here's what I'd love feedback on. And then for yourself to go, okay, I've just opened the door to vulnerability. And so when I get feedback or I get any type of, you know, criticism, Please know that it's all, you know, good reminder. It always comes from a really good spot, but you've got to be really open, you know, a true growth mindset to the good, the bad, and the ugly. And always know that it is very much to make us better people and just to be the best version of ourselves. And so 
Pablo, you just, uh, you struck that chord in me that I just want to make sure I got there. I got in there. Thank you. No, that's, that's fantastic. Totally agree, Maria. That, oh, that growth mindset is so important. It's going to change and evolve throughout your career. And there's so many options. And as a mentee, you get to drive that, which is, which is very powerful. So we have a couple more questions remaining, and then we'll get into some quick Q and A's. So my next question actually comes from a quote that I found about mentorship from Rosalind Carter. And it says, a mentor takes people where they want to go. A great mentor takes people where they don't necessarily want to go, but ought to be. So Pavla, can you get us started on your thoughts about this quote specifically and how maybe you've helped someone stretch or someone's helped you stretch? Sure. Thanks, Ellie. I, I love that quote. I, I mean, really, uh, a mentorship is, is someone who sees more talent and ability in you than you see in yourself. And, and they really help to bring that, that out in you. And I try and be that person for, uh, for our students and, and others in, in industry. And, and I've been fortunate enough to experience that. Um, mentors are, are really, they're, they're a great resource because as I mentioned before, they've, they've likely been where you are and, uh, and, and, you know, they, they know where you'd like to go. And uh, mentors definitely, because they see something in you, uh, can, can have that farther stretch goal than the mentee has for themselves. I, uh, I remember when I was changing industries and my mentor at the time, uh, who was actually in the same industry as, as I was, he said, you know, you, you can do more than what you're doing now. And you know you've already done so many hard things. You're meant to do more, so so please go. <laughs> and uh, it was, um, you know, it takes. Um, I, I think it takes really high emotional intelligence for for a mentor to know when to push and when to back off. Uh, it, it certainly starts with active listening, and we've we've spoken about trust. And I go back to it because I think it's um, it's it's really uh, the mentor mentee model is really one that is built on trust um, and, and and mentorship is really that delicate art that if it's done well then a mentor can be that springboard to propel uh, the mentee much further than they thought they could go and Maria what are your thoughts on the quote <laughs> feel like Pavla took my took my thoughts out of my my mind but I'm going to go another direction and so you know when you at when you sort of say can you relate to this like I underscore I bold it it's absolutely an endorsement and I think the place that I'd like to go to is the importance um when you say you know a great mentor takes you to places that you don't necessarily want to go and ought to be you need to take control it's hard work you have a commitment, you know, I feel like I'm accountable to my mentor. And especially as my mentor is opening doors for me, it's up to me to now take accountability to, you know, jump on these opportunities, even if they cause a great deal of discomfort. And I'm, you know, sweating down my back and, but that's growth that's actually happening when that that's your, you know, that's exactly why we want these relationships um, to flourish and to be organic. And then I think the other part is, you know, mentors who are, are invested and, and we need to be vested and we know that they're coming from a good spot. And so um, we, you know, I, I wasn't a risk taker uh, many years ago, but mentors have actually said to me, you need to, you need to sort of put yourself out there and, you know, watch what's happened. And Pavla said that, you know, the mentors see things in you that you might dismiss because you don't have the confidence in yourself or you think there's no way that I can, you know, that I can do that or I'm quite capable. Um, and then all of a sudden you take these tiny little steps to, you know, up a massive mountain and you're, you need to celebrate the milestones. And that's why, you know, mentors are on your journey. And so, you know, I appreciate the mentors that have been around for me because they've drawn out, you know, growth opportunities that I probably would have dismissed and I would have never loved as much because I, you know, wouldn't have never taken a plunge or known about them. Um, but have really made me uncomfortable and now I'm in a much better place because of them. 
back to that trust and growth mindset, which go hand in hand. And I, I know for myself, I wouldn't have reached probably half of what I achieved if someone didn't take me aside or have those conversations for career, for personal development to say, hey, like you can do more or what do you want? I think would be a really great question to ask yourself goes back to the why so that you can help propel a little bit and someone can guide and see a new perspective for you. So with that, we have one last question and then we'll have some time for Q&A. I know we have some questions in, in the box there. So my final question, it's quick and I've asked both Maria and Pavla to share three words or a phrase that they feel best describes the power of mentorship and I'll get us started. So I picked three words, I think perspective, seeing different sides of things wisdom, someone that maybe has that specialty knowledge or someone that's gone before us and generosity. I think it is a human spirit that gets expressed when we get to help each other, offer support and receive support. So Pavla, what are your words or your phrase? Thank you, Ellie. And I just got goosebumps because I totally agree with, uh, with all of your words. Um, so I have, I guess I have two words and a phrase. Um, so empowerment is one encouragement definitely. And then to, to all the mentors and aspiring mentors, I really feel that your day is not complete until you help someone be better than they were yesterday. I love that. Maria? That's awesome. Okay. So here are my three words and there are three C's and you might think I'm in banking because we like, you know, numbers around here. So my <laughs> first one is connection is, you know, that relationship connection is really important. We need to jive. I need to be, you know, challenged and I'm still going to love you at the end of the day, even if I don't want to hear what I need, you know, what I really do need to hear. And care is my second word. And so I need to trust that, you know, this person is really invested for me and I'm invested for them too, because it is a mutually beneficial relationship. And then the third is commitment. And, you know, I need to be committed to the relationship because I know mentors are committed to the relationship. And I never want someone to feel like they're being used or abused or, not, or you know, taken for granted um, because mentors give their time and time is a scarce commodity and resource. And, you know, I want um, mentors to really feel valued um, for the impact um, and I love the words of empowerment, and encouragement that they provide. And so those are my three C's or my three words. I love that. All right. So I'm going to go to a few questions. We have some time before we end. So just let me check here. Um, so what would be a good professional way to seek out a mentorship and how do you get over the hesitation? I know we spoke a little bit about your journey and navigating that. So how... How did you find the confidence or if you were hesitating, what barriers did you have to break to get there? Maria, oh, yeah. do you wanna? Yeah, my, I'm noodling this one. And so I'd say early days, I didn't have the confidence. And I would say there's a standout individual who, who I still keep in touch with, who she was just sort of there. And, you know, it's sort of like a puppet that she was just sort of there and she'd always provide me with advice. And I remember saying to her, oh, my gosh, Anna, I can't do that. And she goes, oh, I think you can. And so she really started to build my confidence in, you know, taking on roles and projects that I wasn't actually feeling quite strong about. Um, and and so it was uh it wasn't easy finding a mentor for me. I think the other part you said is what barrier, like how did I find the confidence to connect? That there is another individual and her name is Tina. And she said to me one day, Maria, you are losing out on relationships because you're not allowing people into your circle. Mm -hmm. And so when I finally came to terms myself with, you know, people are good people. And I know that I'm a good person and they're going to, you know, have my back. The minute I did that, I actually had an increase in self-confidence that, listen, it's still scary to go up to a stranger and go, you know, how are you doing? What do you do? Tell me a little bit about yourself. And then sort of go, 
oh, I think I really like this person. Like, I'd love to, you know, can I grab a coffee with you? Um, practice didn't make perfect. It's still a work in art and uh, it's still sort of an, an art um, and work in progress for me. But I would say, it, you know, taking that feedback from people who watch you from afar and are really the eyes and ears and they continue to see you and taking the feedback and self-reflecting um, really allowed me to now, you know, can I strike up a conversation with most people? Yeah, for the most part. Is it sometimes scary? Absolutely. Uh, but I think that's what makes it real and keeps it authentic. Absolutely. And I'm going to shift the next question over to you, Pava, because I, I heard that you've had that um, go-getter overachieving sort of style at some point. So how do you manage a mentor-mentee relationship when you have a mentee who's overambitious and by lack of a better phrase, break their hearts and tell them to slow down the pace and pace themselves without shifting that ambition. So it's a little bit different perspective, especially I think that when you're young in your career and you want to take on so much, how would you navigate that? Especially with students. I, right, right. And so um, it it is really difficult for me to tell someone to slow down because you're absolutely right. I, I need to take that advice myself sometimes. But I mean, you can, and, and we all know this, I mean, you can, you can exhaust yourself and burn out. Uh, but I think it goes back to the why uh, and the what, what, uh, what, what do you want? Uh, where do you want to be? And how do we take those steps? And as Maria said before, to celebrate the milestones uh, as you move towards your goal. So uh, do, you, do you need to do everything this week and, and become overwhelmed or can we, can we chunk the goal, right? And, uh, and so I, I think it is that, that conversation, the active listening to really understand what, uh, what the mentee wants in the end uh, or is striving for um, in, in you know, the medium to long term and then really chunk it into learning bites, almost like a classroom uh, and, and, and celebrate the small wins to alleviate that pressure a little bit, but still, still move forward in the right direction. So I think we can squish in maybe one, two questions that I have them highlighted here. So um, as a mentor, do you have any suggestions on how to be a good mentee? Do you recall an interaction with a mentee that stayed with you? So as a mentee, um, how, how can you be receiving in that? Maria or Pablo? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about this one and I, um, you know, once once you build that trust with someone, you uh, you know, as, as a mentee, I never wanted to let down my mentor, right? I mean, you you, you really want to um, really want to achieve what you as a mentee agreed to achieve, or or the um, the direction that you wanted to go, and and so. Um, this is not necessarily saying that as a mentee, you need to agree with everything that your mentor says, quite the, quite the contrary, but, but certainly have the professionalism and the confidence to discuss the, the way forward and making that commitment to constantly move forward and keeping that communication open with your mentor. Um, so that's, that's sort of a start to that, uh, that, the answer to that question. Maria, would you add anything? Yeah, maybe a couple of things that I would add is, you know, on how to be a good mentee. I, just, you know, be engaged, uh, like show up um, as if you like you're interested, not as if you should be, you know, someone's really investing time in you. I think the other part is it goes back to like the why, you know, why do you want to talk to this person or why do you want to stay connected? And does this person actually know the why? Like, have we, we we're not in a formal agreement. But have we talked about, you know, the reason I really, you know, Pavla, like, I really want to continue this discussion, or I really want to get to know you is, you know, here are the things that I'm thinking, or I'm really working on this, or, you know, I'm really just getting started in, you know, my business, my career, I'm, you know, I've got this sort of personal thing happening. And I just see that you've, you've got it together. And I just admire the way you work through it. But here's what I'm struggling with. And here's what it would be, you know, really helpful. And so it goes back to just, 
pure candidness, because if you don't put all of the information out of exactly sort of the, you know, the five why sort of thing, you're not going to get the most out of your mentor and they're not going to get the most out of you. And you might feel a little rocky and a little awry in the relationship and a great mentor mentee relationship feels amazing regardless of the feedback. And so I would say, you know, as a mentee, um, and then I think the second part of that question, Ali, was, you know, an interaction with a mentee that stayed with you. Absolutely. Um, and sometimes I didn't actually even know that this person regarded me as a mentor. And, you know, here we are years later and I go, oh my gosh, I'm that person, you know, that, uh, that person was for me many years ago. And, you know, here we are fast forward many years later, and it's just really great to stay connected to people and your give back is different because now these, you know, mentees have flourished and they've grown and, you know, now they actually seek advice and counsel or guidance or just, you know, you're a sounding board for many different reasons. And so it absolutely has an evolution. And there's that rewarding moment. And I, I've, I've experienced it where someone sends me a message, sometimes on Facebook or different areas that I've totally kind of forgotten that we worked together 10 years ago. I'm like, wow, thank you for that one time. And it's so heartwarming. So with that, um, I'm going to lead it back over to Kelly. Thank you both for joining us today. And Kelly, um, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. is ending because I, I have lots of other questions as well. Um, so uh, it's National Volunteer Week. So first off, I want to thank uh, our speakers and our moderator today who have volunteered their time uh, and expertise to benefit the Georgian Alumni Network. Very appreciated. Ali, Pablo, Maria, thank you for sharing your mentorship journeys and how being a mentor or a mentee has helped shape your career and your personal success and journey. We truly appreciate everything you do to benefit our global alumni community. Um, and thank you for those who have joined us virtually today. We appreciate the support you continue to give to our students and your fellow alumni. Uh, to all of our alumni watching, please remember your alumni engagement office has a wide range of um, services and perks and benefits, corporate discounts and partnerships, as well as services and events like the one we had today that are available to you. You can always stay in the know by uh, checking out uh, georgiancollege.ca backslash alumni, or we put a handy little QR code in there uh, to uh, connect you directly to some of our upcoming events. And we have a few uh, coming up that we would love you to check out. So enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you so much for watching our speaker series. Have a great day.